with, um, I've got a guest with me in my kitchen for the first time here and we're going to make um, a seafood recipe, a sustainable one at that, based on um, a cookbook made by Jill Lambert who's here with me today. And maybe you could tell me a little bit about the, the book that you've recently written. Well, it's called A Good Catch and it's a fish cookbook with a focus on sustainability. It will be published in the fall of 2008 and I've written it in partnership with the David Suzuki Foundation and it essentially marries recipes for great fish with sustainability information so it helps consumers make better fish choices and then when they get that fish home it shows them what to do with it. And uh, what is this specific one called? Well this is Tojo's marinated sable fish and it's a recipe given to me by Tojo who's a chef who's very well known for his sushi okay. but he also um, contributed a couple of recipes to my book that are for cooked fish and this is a really nice simple recipe that highlights sable fish so I thought it would be a good one to do today. And what makes um, sable fish, as far as you know, a good species to cook with? Why is that a sustainable choice compared to others? Well, I would say first and foremost, it's a good species to cook with because it's a really delicious fish. Um, but it is also a sustainably harvested fish, depending on how it was caught and where it was caught. Most of the sable fish in Canada is from BC because it's a, a Pacific species but um, it's caught by trap fishery which is okay. a very unusual type of fishery for a fin fish. So if you're getting Canadian sable fish, Sea Choice ranks that as a best choice. Um, Alaskan sable fish is also a good choice. Um, it's mostly caught by longline okay. and both longline and trap fisheries cause little damage right. to habitat and result in little bycatch. And bycatch is the other kinds of fish that are unexpectedly yeah, yeah. caught by fishery that are sometimes discarded. So we're gonna make a really simple marinade okay. and we're gonna put that on the fish um, and you can leave the marinade on overnight or even up to two days okay. before you take the fish out and bake it. So we're gonna start with the marinade, which is, as I say, really simple. It is a third of a cup of soy sauce. Okay. So in addition to the third of a cup of dark soy sauce, we're gonna put a quarter cup of I'm using white wine, but you could also use mirin, Japanese rice wine, if you happen to have that okay. handy. We want about a tablespoon of sugar, so I've measured that out and I'm putting that in here. Just regular granulated sugar. And then two teaspoons of ground ginger. And then what I have here are some sable fish fillets. This is um, just under a pound of sable fish. I've skinned it okay. and I've taken out the bones. So as you can see, it's a nice white fish. It's fairly firm. Um, it has a high oil content, so it's very rich. You don't need a lot. Mm -hmm. This recipe is really for a first course. Um, it could be a main course, but you don't want a large plate of sable fish because oh, okay. it's very rich. So I'm just going to put the marinade right on the fish in this plastic container. It is a challenge trying to determine the chain of custody of fish. And I just do the best that I can. I go to a fishmonger that I know, okay. and I say, where, where was this fish caught? and how was it caught. And I put the onus on them mm -hmm. to have that information for me. This, so this is going to marinate. This now. is going to marinate. Perfect. Um, <clears throat> you and can you leave this. cover it? Yeah, too. I would okay. cover it. And you want the fish totally covered in the marinade. Um, and you just pop a lid on it and put it in the fridge. Okay. And you can leave it there overnight or for up to two days. And um, you just pull the fish out of the marinade, let it drip a little bit. And it doesn't have to be bone dry. But you just want it to dry off a little bit. You want a little bit of oil on your cookie sheet so the okay. fish doesn't stick, but this is a really oily fish. You need to preheat the oven to 450. Okay. So the oven will be really hot. The fish will cook really quickly. Short period of time. Yeah, and that's another reason for taking the marinade off because there's sugar in the marinade. Right. You don't want it to burn onto the pan. And affordability-wise, where does sable fish rank? Is it something that's a little more of a something you do once in a while or is it a fish I, you could afford to eat like once a week? Or? I was pleasantly surprised actually it is quite affordable it's in the middle range it's certainly less expensive than buying salmon or halibut these okay. days so it's in the oven cooking I'll set that aside. Um, you're gonna cook it as I said at 450 for about 10 minutes and the way to check that it's done is just to see if it flakes. While the fish is in the oven um, and cooking, you have a chance to do the spinach, which is the second part of the dish. And uh, I'm going to put about two teaspoons of olive oil, um, or you could use canola oil if you want it. Put that on a fairly high heat. Okay. Let the olive oil heat up a bit. <clears throat> a teaspoon or so of um, grated or chopped garlic. And just drop the garlic in the pan. 
Let it get up to a nice sizzle. You don't want the garlic to burn, so immediately after adding the garlic, see it's starting to smoke already, you want to wilt in the spinach. So that's just regular spinach that's been washed and dried, and I've taken some of the thicker stems off, because I, I don't enjoy eating them, but you can leave them on if you like. Um, and we're just tossing it in the hot olive oil until it wilts a little bit. And you'll know that it's ready when it just starts to exude a little bit of water. You don't want it completely cooked down. You want it to still be fairly fluffy. It'll continue to cook once you take it off the heat. So always better to undercook it than overcook it. Oh. That looks great. Now the easiest way to tell if fish is ready is to see if it flakes when it's cooked. And sable fish has a really lovely texture. It flakes into these nice big pearly pieces. So the rest of the um, dish assembly is very simple. What we would do is simply plate a little bit of the spinach and garlic mixture. Yeah, so, it does look good. So we've got our fish all um, ready to go and then you just serve it hot and Yes, anything? you definitely would want this okay. hot. Um, I was actually going to say, if you, can't, if you can't find sable fish, there are other good alternatives. Um, because it is a Pacific fish, you may not want to um, buy a fish that's been flown across the country if you're right, in Atlantic okay. Canada, because that can increase its carbon footprint, obviously. So um, if you're looking for a substitution that's uh, more local to wherever you are, you could make this with a number of the um, white fish that are on the best choice list, the okay. sea choice best choice list. And it's a marinade that's very adaptable. You could certainly put it on catfish. And the sable fish, again, when folks go to the grocery store or their fish market, is there any other names they should know? Is, is, is everyone going to know what sable fish is? Or Well, it's commonly marketed also as black cod. Okay. And you see smoked Alaska ba a black cod, then that's a smoked sable fish. But you want to use the fresh version in this dish, although that's also delicious. It's become a much more popular choice, so um, sable fish will be more Great. common. Well, thanks very much, Jill, and um, we'll provide the links again to our Sea Choice um, program that the David Suzuki work on, works on with another bigger coalition, as well as the link to um, Jill's book.